Have you heard the expression, it's lonely at the top? Let's make sure it's not. I'm Christine Saxon. I coach incredible people. I coach um, upcoming CEOs. I coach students. I coach leaders. I coach so many different incredible people in all different industries. And I still hear it's lonely at the top. And I still hear from people when they step in feeling not really prepared for that leadership role that really they've been preparing for for years, that they, um, they step into a blind spot called go it alone. Super independence. I've got this. Now what I've learned and keep learning from leaders is don't go it alone. Don't make it lonely at the top. And so let's talk about that. Yes, of course it can be lonely at the top. When you are the executive director, the senior leader, the CEO, the president, whatever it might be, it can feel different. Your peers, if you if you grew up in a company, you know, and and got yourself to that position, your peers may likely start treating you differently. Um, you now represent something. You have what's called positional authority. And we do see that positional authority can come with uh, loneliness or with making decisions on your own or a whole, a whole slew of things like that. And let's talk about why it doesn't need to be. First of all, it's a mindset. When we have, I was an executive director for a not-for-profit and I remember stepping into it going, I'm on my own here. And within about four months, I went, I'm going to hire an amazing manager to run this youth nonprofit so that I can write the grant proposals and do the things that really are at my level where I need to spend my focus. And it was less lonely. Um, uh, he, he came in with his own ideas and I gladly said yes, do them. And I gave him some direction. So it doesn't have to be lonely at the top. Um, I currently am coaching several incredible uh, female leader, leaders, actually, several stand out for me right now, who all, as they are stepping into their next role, um, one, two, three, four, five levels higher, you know, there's stuff going on in the labor market right now, there's retirements, there are some people not returning to work, becoming consultants, and I'm noticing a trend uh, in that people who are really skilled, really dedicated, are at an earlier time than they expected or even hoped being promoted being asked to consider applying for that senior top level role and what's popping up is imposter syndrome and uh, impo imposter syndrome if you want you can read a lot about it um, you can find out different views on it it still is very real for some people and they think you know do, do they not know I'm not ready a fascinating thing happens when I coach people and we do a simple thing. I pull out a very simple spreadsheet that, spreadsheet that I call fit factors and get them to just simply write down what are the competencies that you see on that job posting. What do you know about the job? What are the senior level competencies that say a CEO needs or an executive director needs? First of all, write them all down. So we have them along as the rows and then on top, there's just some simple things like readiness matrix, you know, uh, green, yellow, or red, or one, two, or three, or not at all ready, um, getting there, and super ready. And by having them do this and really um, uh, break down the job into its component parts, really look not at, the, not at the tasks, but at the competencies that you need to make decisions at that level, to lead people at that level, to liaise between, say, the board and your, your staff and your clients and your stakeholders. What are the competencies you need? And it's fascinating how, first of all, when I've used this with, with incredible leaders who were asked to step in, I have some right now that I'm coaching, who have been asked to step into these leadership roles, their shoulders come down. They, they do this, they, they break down the tasks, they take a look at it and they go, yeah, you know what, I have made a lot of senior executive level in broad scope decisions or I've made some at the project level and I do know how and I do have some some skills around that okay it helps them to um, lessen the kind of turn down the volume on on the imposter syndrome which keeps us healthy or, or keeps us kind of um, uh, it does keep us healthy it keeps us uh, humble maybe I'll say rather than going I got this and then 
not preparing for the interview, not really assessing if you're ready. Let, treat imposter syndrome as your, as your friend, imposter syndrome as your friend. You could instead think, huh, yeah, this is a big step for me. Of course I'm going to be anxious, of course I'm going to be unsure, so what do I need to do to paddle my own boat? What do I need to do to get ready and truly assess where I am so that I can step into it, into the interview and then hopefully into the job with clarity, with knowing where my gaps are and not make it lonely at the top. Who can I partner with now? Who should I tap on the shoulder and ask if they'll be my mentor? Who um, who could be my, my own personal board of directors, for example? Not necessarily the board for the, for the association or the not-for-profit, but who is your board of directors? Who do you turn to and who do you know that's really good in some of the areas that might be your gaps? Who could be there at a you know with a simple text or phone call when you are feeling off and is going to be your cheerleader who's going to uh, push you to your limits or, or push you to grow who knows some of the skills that you don't that can give you a, you know a quick uh, here's where you should look and here's what you need to learn and here's who to talk to so surrounding yourself with people having people um, who've got your back people that you can learn from, people that you can learn along with as you grow, is a way of not making it lonely at the top. And some of these might be within your organization, some might be not. Totally up to you. I happen to have four leaders right now, four female leaders in different roles, in different industries, all stepping up. Um, one just got a job, one got a temporary job and is really now hoping to, to you know, really impress the, the organization and so far they, they really love her and appreciate her and looks like she, she will have an opportunity to just really bring her best to serve their mission. Another has a huge, you know, huge um, title and international opportunities to make a difference. Um, the other is in a senior role and is applying for a more senior role. I've just asked each of them individually and have connected them just out of curiosity because there's a book, there's a great book called The First 90 Days that is for just that. It's when you step into a new role, a new leadership role, um, what are some things you should be aware of? What are some things to think about in your first 90 days? So I, I've told lots of clients about it. It actually was a client that told me about it, so thanks to him. Um, and I thought, you know what, I wonder, knowing these four women, I wonder if they would really benefit from it not feeling so lonely at the top, wherever they are in their journey. Reached out to them, all four said, yeah, I would like that. Not sure of the timing. Um, some were like, yeah, right now. Others were going, I need to think about it a bit for the timing, but absolutely yes. And they are going, they're, they're exploring using that book during their first 90 days in the job and using each other as sounding boards and to share their experiences and, and not get stuck feeling it's lonely at the top. You don't have to go it alone. Paddle your boat. You can see I'm out in my kayak in the beautiful Pender Harbour area in British Columbia on the Sunshine Coast and I am paddling alone right now. In my career I don't. I'm about to publish my first book, um, first in a series called Paddle Your Own Boat and I have one, two, three, Four incredible people who have stepped up and said, I'll do your InDesign layout, I'll do your cover for you, I'll edit your book for you, I'll help you project manage it and figure out how to, how to uh, publish. Actually five, now that I think about it. Five incredible women who are there with me at the drop of a hat. I am suffused with gratitude and just reminded it's not lonely at the top. Happy paddling. <laughs>